Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you exactly how I set up my columns in Facebook Ads Manager so you can be sure to track all the right conversions and data so that you can keep your Facebook ads on track. So first you're going to open up into Ads Manager. You're going to click Columns and then Customize Columns. And then this window is going to pop up for you. On the left you can see the different categories that you can choose from, like engagement, conversions, or even settings, which includes things like names and IDs of campaigns, ad sets, and ads. But in the middle, this is where you're going to make your selection of columns and on the right you're going to be able to arrange your columns so that it can be in any order that you want and when you go back to that center you're going to see that you already have a number of things that are already checked off for you and let's go ahead and fine-tune that now we're going to keep all the things that are already checked off in performance but we're also going to add frequency and then we're going to keep ad relevance diagnostics but i do consider this one as optional under cost we're going to keep the cost per result but we're also going to add in the cpm we're going to leave all the things under page posts unchecked same for cost page and post and messaging and cost messaging. And for media, I actually like to check off video plays at 50% so I can get a better idea of how much of my videos people are actually watching. Under clicks, we're gonna leave link clicks and then we're gonna add link click through rate. And under cost clicks, we're gonna also add in CPC for link clicks. Now just a note about link clicks versus all, we like to track link clicks because those are the number of people that are actually clicking on the link that goes to your website or landing page. When you use all clicks or all CPC, you're also tracking the amount of people who just clicked on different places on your ad, maybe went back to your Instagram or Facebook profile, or just clicked on your picture. So by tracking link clicks, we're getting a much better idea of how many people are actually clicking through onto the website. Under conversions metrics to include, we're gonna add in a few things here. Number one being the total add to carts so that I can see the rate of add to carts versus purchases. We're also gonna add in landing page views, and that's really important so that we can look at the discrepancy between link clicks and landing page views to see if people are actually landing on the website when they tend to. If they aren't, then that might be a sign that your website is actually loading too slow, particularly on mobile. Another thing we're going to add is total number of leads as well as cost per lead. We're going to keep the ROAS and for purchases, total and value are going to stay, but we're also going to add cost so that we can know what the cost per purchase is. Next, under object names and IDs, we're going to uncheck ad set name. Under status and dates, we're going to uncheck ends. It's only good really for lifetime budgets, which I don't tend to use. And if you're wondering why, go ahead and click in the video below to find out. Under goal budget and schedule, we're going to be keeping bid strategy and budget, but we're going to uncheck schedule. Everything else is good, and I am going to keep the last significant ed edit because I tend to like to push that to the very end of my columns. Now I'm going to spend some time rearranging these and like taking out the extra things like on Facebook leads and on Facebook purchases, but I'll show you an end result in just a second. So this is the end result, and I know it's a lot of data, but for my job, I'm gonna be looking at most of this every single day. You know, of course we wanna keep the name, we wanna keep the delivery to make sure that there's no problems with delivery, and then budget amount spent, results and cost per result. Always wanna keep those at the front, because you wanna make sure that Facebook is actually spending the right amount that it's supposed to be. After that, we're gonna be looking at ROAS, website purchases, cost per purchase, which is often gonna be the same thing as your results and your cost per result, but you might be optimizing for something like add to cart or initiate checkout if you're still trying to get those initial conversions. We're going to have add to carts and the reason why we want to keep add to carts is because ultimately we want to see the rate at which those people end up making a purchase and the ones who don't. Another thing we want to keep a close eye on is frequency, particularly for those retargeting campaigns so that we don't have too much of a budget going to them because if we see those getting really high like above a five then we'll know to reduce the budget on those. And then we also have things like like reach and impressions, link clicks and landing page views. And I know there's always going to be a little bit of a discrepancy between link clicks and landing page views. But if you start to notice like something like only half of all of your link clicks actually make it to the landing page, then that signifies a really big problem. And it's something you're going to want to look into. And here we have your link click through rates. This is really just measuring the health of your ads and making sure that they're interesting enough that people want to click through to them. We have your CPC and your CPM and then the number of leads. Now, I also like to track metrics on my leads, even if I'm not specifically doing a lead generation campaign, just because I like to see the number of people that sign up for newsletters and what that looks like in comparison to add to carts as well as purchases. And then again, I have my video plays at 50% just because I want to know what amount of people are actually watching the videos. And then the last four, I do just want to keep track of that bid strategy. And then there are the three quality rankings and last significant edit, which I really like including in campaigns where there's multiple people working in that account. And that's it. That's 
that's exactly how I set up my columns in Facebook Ads Manager. Um, leave a comment below. Let me know how different or similar your guys's is because I found that there's a pretty big discrepancy between almost everybody and what kind of data they're tracking and how they arrange it. But that's all I have for today. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.